So these are the zigzag springs and you just cut them according to how many lobes there are. And we figured out for our particular seat frame we need 13 full lobes. So we cut those with a bolt cutter. And then you have the little tricky situation where the end of the coil spring bends away. And what you actually need it to do is hook back towards the spring. Here's one that's been bent. So we're going to bend these springs to hook the tips back this direction so they can't slip off of the clips. And to do that, I'll just use my little homemade spring bender. Uh, C.S. Osborne makes a commercially available one. If you want to just go out and buy one, that's the easy route to go. I had some angle iron and some pieces in the shop that I was able to just cobble one together. That seems to work just fine. So as long as you can bend that tip towards the rest of the zigzag spring, you'll be in good shape. Okay, so once you have the ends formed on your zig springs, helps if you have two people, but you just want to apply some pressure and stretch them down over your clips. Here we have those mounted with a single screw so far, and then we'll add long upholstery tacks to anchor everything down. So the little hook on the end of the zigzag spring may seem trivial, but it's actually what prevents this spring from pulling out of the clip during regular use. And then just a little bit of ruby twine to tie off the springs. Another option is to use heavy duty springing wire with special clips. And these you can just install with a heavy duty construction stapler. If you have many chairs to spring, this is a pretty efficient way to do it, and the work proceeds pretty quickly. All that's left to do at that point is go ahead and layer up the foam and batting, and think about what kind of a show cover you want for your cushion. This one was a leather cover that we're stapling in place, and it actually received a top stitch detail on the seam for a nice finished look. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.